This is really big screen. I'm serious. All 10 episodes you, I, I, are just, if you watch it, the production quality is like, you, it's like for theater. Uh, it is the prequel series to the events that occur and leading up to legendary entertainment cinematic MonsterVerse, of which the latest sequel, Godzilla x Kong, <laughs> The New Empire, is in theaters right now grossing north of $400 million worldwide. The series explores the past, revealing the legacy behind and the defining events of the MonsterVerse, while Godzilla x Kong the movie unveils the next chapter, defining the future of the MonsterVerse on the biggest scale. Monarch Legacy of Monsters just got a season two pickup. Before we introduce our guests, here's a clip. Supervisor Sean Conrad. Composer Leopold Ross. And he can escape from New York and he can escape from LA, but we're not going to let him escape from deadline contenders. As Lee Shaw, primetime Emmy and Golden Globe nominee, everybody on your feet, Mr. Kurt Russell. So, so Kurt, this is. The, we, were, we were talking about this the first time that father and son have played the same character in a series. Talk about that legacy. Talk about how this all came together. Yeah, you and Wyatt. I'm kind of sorry that Wyatt's not able to be here. He's working on a Marvel production right now in, in Atlanta. So um, uh, I think it's called Thunderbolts. And so and for those that are interested in that. Um, and it is, it's, you know, he's, he's the guy who laid down the character um, I did an interesting thing maybe, I don't know, a couple weeks into shooting. Um, we had discussed, uh, you know, you got to understand that when we came on, it was just a casting idea. Lee Shaw in the, in the uh, maybe three or four shows that were being talked about at the time it was really a fifth or sixth character, so we had to come up with a reason why Wyatt and I were going to do the show. I mean, at some point you say, why are they doing this? Well, we thought it would be an interesting challenge to maybe do something that that would help uh, explain or be very uh, indicative to the audience about what it was we were trying to do with Monarch. Monarch is a what if. It's unlike the movie, it's a what if. It's what if this was really happening. I don't think we'd be too happy about it. <laughs> we'd be very afraid, we'd be living in a world that's not a Jurassic Park thing where there's herds of dinosaurs running around in a place. This is, a, this is a bad thing that's happening. And this monarch is about the people who are dealing with it. And within that, there are some monsters too. There are human monsters. So we started talking about the character, how it could you know, uh, work within a concept that everybody was going down the same track. 
And uh, it was really the only place where Wyatt and I got to work together because that was where we, where we sort of worked on what it was that Lee Shaw was going to be. It was a lot of fun, but the most fun thing for me was a couple weeks in, uh, I went to, I, had, I was off, I wasn't working, we were doing two different crews, and I went, I said, oh, I'm going to go check out and see what Wyatt's group was doing. And it was fascinating for me because for the first time, you know, this is my son, I'd known him all my life, he knew me all was his life, so... Like, you know, I, as an actor, I'd watched him before, and I'd been on sets of his and stuff, but in an appreciative sort of way. Now I was suddenly watching this character be laid down that I was going to be playing the other half of much later in life. And it was really fascinating. I found myself watching this actor. And I remember thinking, fuck, man, this guy's good. <laughs> I better, I better, I better get my game going here because this is, this is, this can't, this can't fall down when it, when it, when it gets to my part of it. But on the film side, t tell him you've also worked before with him in Soldier. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it turned out we did this when we were doing publicity for the show. We found out from a bunch of people they'd looked at it. It's never been done before. There's never a known actor, a father and son, both of them being known, uh, playing the same role. And that's not really true because Wyatt and I did that in Soldier. He played the same. He played the the character Young when he was twelve. When the character of Todd was twelve, and then I played him, um, you know, later on in life. So we've actually done it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so talk about what Wyatt established, the underpinnings, and then where you took it. Because your the feeling that I got is is your Lee Shaw. He's a he's he's a wise soul. He's, you know, it's, he's not cynical. Uh, he's been through it all, but he seems to be a bit more, a bit more optimistic about, about the, you know, the calamity that he faces than... Yeah, he, he's the, sort of the man who knew Indians. He, he, he's been to places and seen things that nobody else, except now for Keiko, has seen. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, you know, listen, when, when one actor is going to lay down a character that you're going to you're going to be part of. Um, it was interesting. Wyatt and I, yeah, we have uh, f physical characteristics that are similar and things like that. But his energy and my energy are quite different. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot, I run a lot hotter than he does. He's, he's kind of a cooler cat. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we, we were meeting, you know, we were meeting somewhere. He's kind of, he kind of brought some of his energy up in places, and I sort of have brought mine down a little bit, because uh, we, we felt that it was right for, for Lee right for the show, um, and you're doing 10 hours. It's a very strange, uh, for me it was really, it's been 50 years since I've done anything like television, at television pace. You're doing, in effect, you're doing five movies back to back to back to back to back. And each director is doing two episodes because you know each episode's about an hour, so two of them is like a movie. So you got five different directors on five different movies, and, you're, and, and you don't know exactly what the, uh, what the next thing is going to be. You talk about it, and we've got a wonderful bunch that, that collaborate very well. Uh, Legendary and Apple both have been uh, incredibly supportive in every way. Uh, it's a tough thing doing these. It's, 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 not, it's not like movies. It's, it's, they're very different. I, I, I'm not sure I like it, but <laughs> it's, like, it's, you know, it's not easy. But um, I like the people, and that's been fun, and that will continue to be fun because I, I, you know, I guess we're gonna we're gonna go again here. So that's the cool thing, right? Sean, you've worked on some of the Godzilla legendaries Godzilla films. Tell us about taking it to to series. I mean, this is very big. This is still very big screen. There's nothing small screen about this. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the really important things when we were talking about the show at the beginning because you know sometimes with an episodic you're talking about a lower budget you're talking about you know you're doing the small screen version of it and it was really important for both legendary and apple that this is not the small screen version we want the same impact of the big creatures on screen and so you know i worked on godzilla 2014 as an artist and worked on stuff like Godzilla's atomic breath and the dorsal fin lighting up and you know a lot of like tiny little pieces and then later I worked on King of the Monsters as a you know a, a vendor side so all the small studios you know working on on that you know I was I was a visual effects supervisor on one of those and then taking that to um, now taking that to a TV series there's a lot of different challenges but 
fundamentally the same language applies to it all. You're, you're trying to find areas where you can make these creatures look as big as they can. You're, you know, t taking a lot of attention to detail and, and really, you know, trying to drive all those factors home. What I noticed in the clip is there's a bit of humanity to Godzilla. That, you know, it's not just, it, you know, reminded me of sometimes what's done in, with animation where the actors inspire the character. Was that going on here? Was there a performer informing any of the performance? It just, there, there just seemed to be like, a, it, he wasn't just monster to be monster on screen. There was a nuance that. No, I mean, like, like a lot of, you know, you can do facial capture for stuff like this, and the, the problem is that the, you know, facial anatomy of Godzilla is not like your facial anatomy, so it's, it's not going to map on cleanly, and so, you know, a lot of it is just honestly looking at what we've already done in the feature films and saying, okay, this is that kind of expression, and this is what this character moment needs to be, you know, like a little bit of... It's 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 an interesting with Godzilla like like he's not really supposed to relate to people directly but I think that there's like a softness or an intelligence there that we need to impart. Okay, this is on you. Can you tease any of the monsters in season two? Um, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I I also I hear you're is it true you're a Bramble Boar fan? Yeah, the Bramble Boar is my favorite. I, I thought what you did with the Bramble Boar, just in terms of how you played it, uh, I thought it was great. I mean, because, you know, it, 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 I, I, don't, I can remember sort of what was written. And whenever you're doing something like this, you know, you've got to understand you, you're not exactly sure of what it is you're going to be seeing or acting with. But I love that you had that Bramble Boar. I don't know who discussed it with you or you know, whether it was your thing. But you, you, By the way, congratulations to both of you guys. It's really nice to meet them. I've never met them before, and they're both great at what they did, pull the movie off. <laughs> you know. But uh, I love that Bramble Boar comes, comes right at her, and it just and it sniffs her. It's not interested, apparently, and you kind of like go, oh, well, okay, she got away with that. And it's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I loved that. That was, a really, that, was, that was really cool. I'll try to keep this quick, but, you know, the, like, uh, Andy Goddard had been talking about that scene from Annihilation where like the bear is scoping them out and it's like this this present threat and the thing about a bear is like you don't know when it's going to snap and that's the thing that we were trying to impart with that of like okay this thing this thing can just turn on a dime and so like that that tension was was built into it and you know the design of the creature was just like we were we were going back and forth of what we wanted to do and you know, we kind of realized that there hadn't been a boar in the, the MonsterVerse yet, and I love those boars from, like, you know, Princess Mononoke and other films, so I just thought this would be a really cool thing to do. So we pitched it, and they went, they went for it, so. You know, when you, when you mentioned that Godzilla seems like he has some humanity, be careful there. <laughs> These are, you know, there's, that's like, that reminds me of that documentary, that guy who went and messed with the bears. <laughs> he found out, you know, <laughs> these, are, these are a lot worse than that bear. <laughs> I don't know if Godzilla has anything, anything other than what he, whatever it is he's doing. <laughs> um, Leopold, tell us about working with uh, executive producers Chris Black and Matt Fraction on setting the tone to that, with that main title theme. Um, yeah, it was a real thrill to be asked. You know, I'd worked with Chris Black before, and when I got the call about Monarch, it was just super exciting, the idea of being able to put music underneath such a screen icon as, first of all, Kurt Russell, but also Godzilla, two huge screen icons. So I was like, <laughs> fuck yes, <laughs> sign me up. Um, I'll take that. <laughs> to be honest, um, Chris sent me some of the scripts and I was so excited that I just started writing music. I hadn't seen any visuals or anything like that, but I was kind of running on adrenaline. I wrote a bunch of stuff. They were away shooting, so I sent it to Chris. I was like, here's some stuff, and like one of these is, maybe it could be a main title theme. Didn't hear anything back, because they were shooting, and I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> then uh, time goes on, we're working on episodes, we're getting deeper and deeper into the show. I'm like, They've cut the main title theme into a rough thing at the beginning, and I'm like, they put it in there, but no one's saying anything. Like, normally when you work on shows, as I'm sure everybody knows here, like, there's a thing called notes, and <laughs> you get a lot of them. But um, 
I can honestly say that I never received a single note on the main title theme. Oh, wow. It was just, that was it. And I was like, so thrilled because I was immensely proud of it. And the fact that they trusted me with it and they went with it allowed me to kind of expand upon it and really kind of evolve it throughout the show in so many different iterations. It plays on so many different instruments and so many different keys and stuff. So it was a real thrill and I really appreciate the whole team for kind of trusting each other because it's a, it's a real process, you know, and Sean and Kurt made my job easy, to be honest. And the feeling you wanted to exude with that main title, tell us. Uh, I it's think a, it, it's an intent, you know, it's an intent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think there had to be a level of intensity and there had to be a level of mystery and intrigue because Monarch has always been this shadowy thing. I think that's another fantastic thing about the show. Like, throughout the movies, there's never been that much detail in how Monarch came to be. So yeah, it was sort of trying to imbibe this sense of mystery and wonder and excitement. Excellent. Apple TV Plus's Monarch Legacy of Monsters. <laughs>